And we jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report every Monday with new issues, updates throughout the week when warranted. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, right under the newsletter tab. You'll find that he's got a couple of great courses under the services tab as well, talking about webinars that you can access. But let's jump into that dollar index and some currencies. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So I always love reading your letter on Mondays, man, and I was... You lead it off usually with the dollar index, so maybe if we can lead off with the dollar index. We're kind of in a little bit of a chop here off the prior levels, but 105.68. Um, what do you think about the dollar? Maybe we can start there. Sure, sure. Um, we can start with the dollar index. Uh, now, one thing you got to think about is what's going on with the Fed meeting recently. Okay, so the reaction I think that we're getting from the markets is interesting. Um, however, uh, I don't buy the fact that there's we're picking a top in yields right now. I think that's what the media is doing and the consensus is doing. And I don't like to try and pick a top or a bottom, especially in something like the stock in like the S and P's or the bond market on such a heavy trend that we're experiencing. And I think the dollar index, you have to realize that we're coming off a lower move high, and we made a lower move low, you know, <clears throat> on uh, on Friday, you know. So I mean. Right now, we're in a short-term correction with the dollar index. I still think that we could probably probe support a little bit more, and I have three trade setups that kind of are going with that, which would mean that we'll probably see the dollar index test support over the next few sessions. Um, now, are we going to go very far? Well, you got to realize the dollar index has been on a terror for the past, like, you know, four and five months, you know? So for us to have even just a three to 5% correction is a profit taking move you know it has nothing to do with the overall economy or trends overall going on i think it's just healthy so yeah i'm a little bit bearish the dollar and if you would like to talk about uh the yen the euro and the pound i got some trade setups that would kind of reinforce that that view if you'd like to go over we love those. it let's do it where do you want to start Okay, well, I think, uh, I don't know if you can pull up a euro US dollar chart. Um, sure. But, uh, okay, so if you pull that up on the daily, okay, you'll notice that we made a new high on Monday and we've had relatively just a little bit lower of a trade over the past few sessions going into today. I think that today's bottom is very critical. And sometime between today's trading right now going into tomorrow's close, if we can take out the high from Monday, that would be a nice indication that we could probably see the euro US dollar get a move of probably up into that 108 pushing 109 handle. Okay, now that would put pressure on the dollar index. Okay, if this was to occur. Now, this trade is forming. So today right now, I'm not saying to buy into this break right now. You need a confirmation of tomorrow. If tomorrow we get take out the high from Monday, then I think you have a very good indication that you're going to catch a nice rally that will trade into Friday and into next week. Okay. Now, if you can pull up a British pound um, US dollar trade um, chart, yep. that's also setting up in a very similar pattern. Okay. So if you see how we made that high on Monday with the low that we're coming off of today, if that holds and if we can trade higher up towards that higher, take it out, you know, over between somewhere between today and tomorrow's close, once again, you're going to have that bullish situation which will weigh on the dollar index because these are the two heavyweights in the dollar index, okay? So if they both break out to the upside, I could see the pound push that 125.94 up to maybe even 127.32. Remember, the pound can give you more bang for your buck on volatility, especially when it starts to spike into an area, okay? Or trend, start a new trend. So I'm not saying that we're extending a trend, you know, but I think there's a possibility for, to probe that because the situation is brewing right now, okay? But once again, I wouldn't say to try and buy into it right now wait for confirmation tomorrow and then jump on the trend then and here's the kicker that i think will really really touch this off okay and i know you like talking about the yen because of its influence in the gold and other markets now if you look at the u.s dollar yen chart on a daily basis they've been rallying off of a nice higher move low however if you look at that higher move low and the last low before that you have kind of a head and shoulders forming so if you take the low from last week and the low was, was it uh i think the low was on yeah october 30th okay yep. and then we have the second low which was november 3rd okay yep. those two lows there are your neckline if you draw a neckline from there if that take gets taken out over the next few sessions which would coincide with the euro us dollar and the pound us dollar going up 
the dollar index, you hit and take hit support. You have a nice little slide there, and all three of these currencies could give you a nice move. So the yen, you could see probably retrace back to that 148 even, so even 147, you know, 250 something like that, 147 300 area. You know, so you're looking at some nice, you know, trades that you can get on sure. for a few days for sure. Those are great, man. I appreciate you walking us through them. Three great trades. Uh, and wh what kind of room do you give yourself on on a trade like that, Teddy, in a, in a currency trade like this? You know, let's just say even the yen, we're at 150.83, so you'd be looking for maybe a, a, a pullback to the 149 area or 149, what's the low? 149.18 is, is the mm -hmm. low of November 3rd. And mm -hmm. if you're making a, a trade there looking for lower price there, what, what kind of a stop do you try and give yourself or how do you think about that for people who that's, are a, that's not a great question so let's say, let's take the u.s dollar yen trade on that so my my point would be so the low was a price point it's 149.18 um okay so if you were to sell it say let's say you had a stop in to get in the market 149.17 or 15 or something like that okay. to give yourself the room to confirm the low you know if you take that out i would use pretty much the swing high which would be probably set today you know so that would be probably around 151 so so it is a nice. there's a little bit of, of, a, of a gap there it's 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 not like a cheap trade however sure. if you're looking at what you're looking to make on it you're looking to make every bit of two to one ratio and potentially if the dollar index gets hammered like let's say that i'm right on these trade setups on just a currency basis but what if the yield curve actually starts to fall apart and they start to pull back strong that reinforces that trade well then you know and we even have like lower oil prices that could give the yen you could get it down to 14509 and that could happen within like a period of 3 to 5 trading sessions so sure. then you're looking at 3 to 3 to 4 times your uh your risk reward uh you know ratio right there, which is, I think, is a tremendous type of opportunity for this situation because it's reinforced by other currencies. You know, I always say that the best indicators of the markets are other indicators. I have a lot of friends, you know, why don't you use this or look at this and look at that? I'm like, because they're all lagging for the most part, you know, when it comes to indicators. You know, price, price discovery is not the same as indicators, what they give you when it comes to, you know, gauging overbought, oversold, and what have you, you know. But one thing that's pretty pure at any given moment is what's going on with another market, you know. And if you use other markets as the indicators, that's when you get your strongest reinforcement for trades. I love it, man. I appreciate three trades. Everybody likes concise info, you know, no um, flirting around it. You got price action, you got to stop, and you got to love when you have clarity in terms of where your price level is when you have your stop, where you think you're going to get in for momentum, and you have a trading plan. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but at least you have clarity as opposed to getting in a trade where you're not quite sure with the levels. So that's what I like about how you set those up. And folks, we archive every um, segment we do, every interview we do. So you had so much great information, Teddy. If anybody wants to check it out, right on our YouTube channel, just search TFNN. We archive just this interview every week. You can check that out. And don't forget about the Tiger Forex report, folks. You just heard that that was, that was a great segment, Teddy. Thanks for putting that Thanks, together. Thanks, Tommy. I, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Take care. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab. Uh, three great traits. And I like that clarity. We'll be back to finish up the program, folks. Stay tuned.